Don't you know that the music should oh, be uh, so No, no, ahead. no, we're going. This is it. Yeah. Are we on yeah. now? Yeah, we're on. So you texted me this morning. I love it when you text me when I wake up. There you are, because you're two hours ahead of me. Yeah. And you sent me a, a clips with a Z, clips, yeah. right? Yeah. About improv. Can I, can I tell you what I said on our beautiful Twitter universe? I haven't Did seen you, it yet. Can I tell you what I said? Please. So I retweeted it because you're brilliant. And I said, my middle name is Improviser. <laughs> when people come up to me in the street and say, hi, my name is Joe Henry Blow. I say, hey, man, my name is Kim Improviser Coates. Nice to meet you. That's it. It's just that true. Okay. That's the truth. Can I first thing have the guy's last name is Blow? Blow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It sure. was gonna be it was gonna be Joe Blow, but but the humor is in the middle oh, name. Oh, okay, now Joe I got Henry it. Joe Blow. Blow. I wasn't doing that. I was Joe Blow. I, yeah, I was thinking about. You've that. heard that. I, yeah, I don't know. I thought I heard Blow. I thought of cocaine. I, didn't know what was. <laughs> so I don't want to go where your mind goes. No, here, my mind is fucking terrible. So, Mary Jane, I gotta talk to your mom about you. <laughs> my mom is. I love your mom. How is she? Is she kooky? Yeah, you beautiful. Know, you know what it is. Hanging in in Staten Island. How is Hanging she? Hanging in it. You know, you know what I got it. You know what a lot of people don't talk about because of you know. And you and I were just briefly discussing this before we got in about you know what we've been, what's been going on in this you know this unprecedented times like we talk about for the last ten months now. We're going in month. 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're we're a lot of us are extremely fortunate. A lot of us, you know, we've lost so many people, and you know, so many things have you know gone on, and our world has changed dramatically. But a lot of people, like MJ, my mom, and like other people who are older in life, who were who were potentially planning on retiring, right? Who were potentially planning on traveling, maybe after right? retired or selling their small business. Those are gone. My mom's a small business owner. Like, you know, she- It's she actually is, a big small business. It's a big small business, but she's literally actually. head above water, just trying yeah, to do what she yeah. did. She is not a unicorn. She's not unique in that situation. And I, when I speak to her, I'm like, my goodness, this was, she'll tell me this was not the plan. Now, you know, the line, they say man makes plan and God laughs, you know, man or woman makes plan and God laughs. But the thing is, is that I feel- for her and a lot of other people who had been through this journey of life. Right. And were kind of coming to that, you know, the brass ring, the gold or the gold watch time where they were like, you know, I think I'm going to take some time, kick up my heel. That's over with. They're not doing that. And uh, especially where she is in New York, which is just getting utterly decimated by uh, the Rona. And um, sorry you know, to hear that. Yeah, and you know, and and again, she has a lot of friends. My 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 other aunt Maliki, uh, her and her husband, who are, you know, right near their eighties. They just got it. He got it a lot worse than her. And you know, you said that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people that are just getting um, smashed by this. And again, you and I were saying this before the show. We're ten months into this thing. Our realities have been utterly altered forever, and. Um, if your anxiety isn't up, you're either you're either a Buddhist monk or you smoke a tremendous amount of marijuana. I don't even know how, because I think everybody, no matter how bad or good it is, your anxiety baseline right now is like right above the eyes. And I think that people who have never possibly experienced anxiety or being anxious that are, are now feeling those those mm -hmm. feelings. Um, I think about them all the time because it's a whole new world now. It's a whole new uh, time and we need to get through this and we are, we will, we're human beings. But in the meantime, I do feel for the level of anxiety for everybody right now, it's got to be through the roof at times for sure. Yeah. And, and, and again, just know that what I want, what I always wanted to say, and I, and I think that people need to know this, especially, you know, with people like you and I is that, I, I feel it. Like I, I hear you, like, you know, I see it with people. And that's why when they say like, you know, something like an example of this show, like, thank you so much. It, it just gives me a moment. It gives me a break for a second. It changes things. Yeah. Like just know that in, in one way or another, everybody's going through it. So yeah. just offer that level of kindness and that level that you're, that you love so much when you get from things like this show, try to offer that to others because yeah, 
it doesn't matter who someone is. If you think they have a ton of money, remember, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you spend, right? So there's a lot of people that make a lot of money who are literally completely going broke because they made poor decisions pre this. And then there's other people who are just, because it's not all financial. This is also a mental game, right? There's people who are dealing with drug and alcohol uh, problems. There are people who are dealing with mental health issues that this has enhanced everything. So that level of kindness that you know you need at this moment, because we yeah. all need it, offer that to others. You know, yeah. when, even if it's just a hello, you know, there was a tow truck driver outside my neighborhood today, like, you know, uh, taking a car and I just went out and said, Hey man, you want a soda? You know what? You know, you want a club soda? You want a water for the road? Like just offer little things that you can to people because we all need it at this moment. Cause everybody yeah. is baselining at like the, zzz. everybody's <laughs> flipping out. It's, I got to tell you, this is so funny. And it's a perfect segue to what you just said, which is so meaningful and true. Uh, I remember a few years ago, I, I was doing a, doing a movie somewhere and, I had a house that they put me up in and there was garbage once a week and I was there quite a long time and the garbage guy would come by. And one time I just offered him a bottle of water. Said, hey, that'd be great. Thanks. Every week he stopped and said, got my water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah it's amazing. See, got my water. Yeah. That's, that's, go, uh, yeah, that's the self-entitlement that I love. <laughs> yeah, that's the self-entitlement that I love. We talk about that. It's so funny when people, do you ever do that? You definitely have people in your life like that. That'll be like, Hey, can I borrow a, can I borrow yeah, a dollar? Yeah, you know what I mean? Can I, do you have five? And it's like, well, didn't I just give you the, okay, sure. Yeah, people, human, humans are absolutely, oh, fuck. there's my H's again. Humans in themselves humans. are just uh, truly fascinating creatures. Fascinating. And, and again, in this time right now that we're in, it's really a revealing moment too, for a lot of people's personalities, right? Like if you're, you know, if you're kind of a bad person, they're becoming like really bad because they're like spinning. And if they're like a good person, they're becoming like really amazing nah, and good, nah. beautiful. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I, it, this is almost like a steroid for, for, for personalities. And, um, and it's really revealing to a lot of people who they are and who the people they surround themselves are. That's right. So, uh, so yeah, uh, listen, and we're fortunate. We, uh, we get to do this. You and I have connected again through this and we get to have these once a week chats about, uh, about a show that I got to tell you, you know, we'll go right into it when we watch it. I I'm, this is episode two, man. This is seeds. <laughs> this is the second one we ever did. And let me tell you something, you know, it, when you watch it, there's a lot of mistakes in it. There's a lot of things that happen. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. To There's get so this. many, but also it's still that moment where we didn't need the preview because the preview was just, you know, the first little thing, all our, but, it, but, but it was clay. It was clay previously on Sons of Ash. Yeah. We but, did see a bit of the pilot. We did see it, but you know, it's brand new. But our, but our, like, there's some, there's parts of this. When we get to it, our audition scenes are in these, like there are some of our lot, like, I know we're going to talk about take, but it's coming th up. This is like, this is truly still the beginning. And oh, not only is it beginning, I want to talk about your hair for sixty minutes. <laughs> I want to talk about the shave, no shave, yeah, mohawk, barely and, and, a mohawk. And and we we need to do one more thing, Theo Rossi, and that is give a shout out to all the incredible Samley, Fam Crow family of yeah. ours that did that video for oh. our for oh. our show reaper rave reaper raves. The, re the reaper raves i mean you you girls and boys you beauties and bruisers from the bottom of of my heart and theo's heart i know we this show is is taking off in in ways that we didn't even see possible when we first started this thing and to to know that we are we we don't expect anything from you other than to be fans and family and and try and enjoy your wednesdays with uh, with us but what you did and what you put on video, for those of you uh, who haven't seen it, check it out on Twitter and Instagram. It's pretty wild, eh, Theo? Yeah, it is. And and you know what? We get we just get the greatest messages. And people that people that have to understand that like this truly is like such a community and it's such a tight thing. Like even to make that video, to take that time. Agent to have, 644 to have couldn't host. have done that. No, I couldn't 644, have done that. 644 through 660 couldn't have done that. <laughs> I mean, like that is, but agent, uh, uh, what is it? 86. Uh, 86, she was, I think. She was, she the, was amazing. She was the host. 
And, yeah. and, and the truth is to do that, it shows that, yeah, it might not be the biggest community in the world, but it's growing. And, and just to watch everybody, the kindness flow through it and people like really put themselves out there and do that video for us. But, uh, but I got to tell you, we got this message um, from this woman, uh, 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 Trisha Staines. It's S-T-A-I-N-E-S. I'm probably uh, ripping apart that last name. But she's a she's a dispatcher, a police dispatcher in New Jersey. And um, she just wrote this amazing long thing. And I, I'm not going to read it, but, you know, just at the end, she just said, you know, SOA has the most dedicated, loyal fans. And we appreciate you both so much for doing what you do for us. Just by doing this podcast shows how important the fans are for both of you. I hope you continue to do it and eventually get to every episode. Thank you again. You, uh, you know. Uh, thank you, Kim, blah, 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 all this stuff. Point is, there it is, right? Being a police dispatcher, being in, you know, any essential work right now, anything, whether you're delivering, you know, uh, for, for Amazon or Walmart, like just being out there, like just literally servicing others. Again, that's what this is. Don't forget what this is. We love watching these episodes and we love making fun of people and doing our thing. But at the end of the day, we're doing this because we love each other and we love yeah. doing it. And we love that you love it. Yeah. We're not, yeah. We're, not, we're not trying to be controversial. I'm not trying to get fucking clicks. I'm not trying to get like, oh, this went viral. And we said this dumb shit about, you know, politics. Or I don't give a fuck about any of that. This is to have fun and to let your mind go for hopefully 70 well die wants it at 70 minutes kim's wife so hopefully 70 minutes let's try and keep it at 70 or or or, or, or yeah. under all right okay, so under, let, over over 70 minutes let's go let's go so we're gonna get into seeds it's the second episode of okay, sons so of anarchy go here we go okay here we go seeds now again and i'm repeating myself but what the fuck charlie and ron clay and jacks they're at it from the from the very beginning, yes. like, okay, so I, I, that just continues to blow my mind. Right from the pilot, now the first show after the pilot, they're at it. Look at Opie with that bandana. Halfway, it's literally everywhere. It, it's that big. Looks like a pool cover. How, so I'm asking you, because you shot the original pilot. I didn't, yeah. I was brought yeah. in with Perlman, right? Yeah. Was that a discussion that he had? Did Perlman take that idea over? Did Ryan fall in love with his beanie? Like what? What was the deal? So there? there was so many things different from the pilot to the uh -huh. reshot pilot, including costume. We didn't have the same costume department. Oh. And one thing about Ryan Hurst, which I love so much about him, I really do. And he's taught me a lot. And he's really taught me to insert this into my own life, especially in acting, is Ryan is pretty steadfast in what he wants. He does not waver. I mean, you remember the, the issue with the gold tooth and Ryan does not waver. Like he, when he wants something, he kind of, there's no discussion. And I'm, I'm assuming that he came up with that or the first costume people did, and he probably had to stick with it. Now, because we shot the second pilot pretty ways later from the first. It was, pilot. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when the first, you shot the first one in February we didn't come back until like early May. So March, April, but three months later. Three months later. We sat two for and a three half. months. Yeah, we sat for two and a half, three months knowing that two people were being replaced and that, that we were going to reshoot it. For two and a half months, I was convinced it was me. Charlie was convinced it was him. Everybody was convinced that. they were not going to be on this show anymore. So one of my questions, and I'll do it now, it's a little bit later in, in our talk, but I'll do it right now, is we, like when I see Booney, Without that Santa beard, gone. Like, were, 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 were you guys told when you finished the pilot in February? Hang on, we're gonna get picked up, probably. Hang on, grow your stuff. Hang. Like, were you told anything, no. or were you just like dogs on the loose? We'll let no. you know. Everyone no. went off to shoot a movie or a TV yeah. show in the meantime. Is that right? I, I, I would think that maybe there was only a few series regulars, and anybody who knows anything about film and television knows those are the people under contract. The ones who weren't under contract but were on the show were myself, Opie, Unser, uh, Alvarez, who became Alvarez, Emilio, because yeah. yeah. he played he played the Tig character. Right. Um, Piney. Uh, we weren't under contract, so we were told less. 
But because I had such a good relationship with everyone on NFX and, and all, everyone, I was getting a lot of information. Um, no, I, 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 I honestly thought there was no way the show was coming back. I, I, because it, we, it just was crickets. And yeah, then, then yeah. we got, then we got that first lure in the water where it was, it's coming back. They're reshooting the pilot. We didn't know how much. And they're replacing at least two actors. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mom, it's Theo. It's no, over. I'm your son. I'm your son. It's over. I was an actor at one time. Yeah. I was. And I, I and love again, where your brain goes. Of course, because that's, that's when an actor thinks, you know, especially for someone who didn't have a lot to do. But never would you have thought that the main character, Clay, at that time, and his right-hand person would be switched. Now, what's funny is now being in the business 20 years, of course, that's who it would be. It would always be the main character because they're the one they're watching enough of. It's very rare that it's like a side character, you know? So listen, everything happens for a reason. Um, I think that a lot of the looks that you saw were holdovers from the first pilot. We'll discuss something in here of Jack's having black sneakers on. Like that was a rarity. I think that might be the only time. I, I, I never saw it. Was it in the second show? Here? It's in a the black... second show. Yeah. When I didn't talk... see it. But we'll talk about a couple of things that were holdovers. So cool. let's get right into it. Um, we're still pretending to be bikers in the opening of this. Jax is welding. <laughs> he's got good... <laughs> No, and he's got the, 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 the Teller Morrow shirt on. I think I think Ch Charlie wore that three times. In like yeah, and he's welding. Episodes. When did Jax weld? Me. No, no, it's called acting we, 101. We don't do, like <laughs> it was, in the beginning, they were pushing so hard that we were mechanics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we got away from that real quick right yeah, so real, real we're quick. pushing we're pushing that we're mechanics so again this is something that we lost too besides being mechanics was bobby like a baker or something i guess so because he brought in some muffins but i that mean was, that was like a story point he was a he would bake and everybody well, loved actually it. you know what he is because we haven't done it yet but in the first season i'm sure it's the first season Bobby and I are in the garage and he makes meatloaf. Yes. He was like a cook. He brings it like so he's a cook. Yes. We didn't even see what his kitchen looked like, let alone continue on that storyline. Yeah, and and forget the fact, let's not forget the fact that this dude has no facial hair at this moment. That is not the boon I know. It's an early no 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 yeah, no 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 Santa boot, no Santa beard, nothing. It's 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 nothing on his face except he's trying to grow a beard. So he comes in like he's baking, like this is something that he does all the time. He's like, hey guys, I got, I got the hey. treats or I got whatever. And, and we're all excited. And I guess that was, again, another lost story point, like juice being hopped up on, you know, mountain. Whatever he was hopped whatever, up on. Yeah. Drugs. And then all these story points that kind of just go by the wayside, us being mechanics. So then uh, the deal with the Niners is done. This is when the Mayans were still like our mortal enemy, right? The Mayans yeah. were like, those were our full-blown enemy. Um, so we're doing all that stuff at the garage. Then we go, Hale is the full bad guy and adversary. Right there, he's with one of my favorite people. I don't know if you've worked with Glenn Plummer before. Glenn, uh, Glenn Plummer is not only one of the true great actors out there. That, that guy, he can do it all. And he's definitely on our payroll. I mean, right? He plays, who's he play? Vic? Vic. Yeah, Sheriff Vic. He played I mean, high top in colors in one of yeah, my come favorite on. movies with Sean Penn. Can that, can that guy yeah. fucking act? I mean, he seriously. can fucking act and he's a great dude. And he's a great, he's like literally been a staple in Hollywood for so long. So he was, he was way more than Unser. He was like fully on our payroll. Like he did everything. I mean, taking bodies out and stuff. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And he was around for how many seasons you think? I don't know. I looked him up last night. He did like seven shows. So he gets kicked. Have we, have we talked about that yet? He gets killed. No, I don't remember that. When? Okay. It, it's one, of, I think, Season I think two. we did. I think, well, I think we met, it's, it's when we see Venus Van Damme mm. in the background. No, we did that show. He gets we shot. We did. He gets plugged. He, he, get, he gets plugged, man. So that's like season two, three, 
two or three two two yeah season two and 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 that's when we bring up venus the name venus yeah but yeah it's not the venus it's a different venus but we do believe that that's the the I, precipice for venus yeah i i think the way they did it we talked about it then the way they did it the way they shot it saw her could have been i you know it wasn't walton but let's could have been but imagine, the imagine the precipice that started four or five seasons before. Four, so that, yeah, that's exactly. br the brilliance of writing. So I love Glenn Plummer. We do that. Hale is in that mood, in that full bad guy, like hard ass. You know, he's still building that character. Um, still building, just starting to build. This is only the second started. show. Yeah, here we go. Literally, Hale. literally second weird week haircut. Work. Yeah, <laughs> second week. Okay, work, baby. so let's tell the people. Um, your audition scene comes up right there. And the reason I know that is because it was my audition scene for Hawk before you were even <sighs> a, a thought in this process was everybody knows I read for almost every character on the show. I started by reading for Jax, obviously not Jax. Um, then I read. For no Hass. one is. No, no one. one. Is. Yeah. I mean, they looked at me and they were like, why is he in here? And then I read for <laughs> half sack. Then I read for a character named Hawk which was Tig. Um, and the audition scene was the scene you did sitting on the bike. Okay, that's fascinating to me because I have to tell you when I did my audition way back in that February, I read for Clay, too young, read for Bobby, not right. And then as I'm leaving, John and Kirk go, hey, there's another, his name was Hawk. It wasn't that scene. It was a completely different scene than, than that one. I, I'd um, never seen that scene. That's before. the one I had read. I read the one about. I'll, uh, there was two. There was. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I was hitting them both. That one. Okay, I did that, that scene. Is, yeah. And then I did. I'll fill their be uh, fill their bellies full of bleach. Yeah, it's the same. It's, it's 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 the same. It's the same scene. Uh, just okay, different, same scene. So same I did scene. that scene as the audition for Hawk. So I'm I'm in the I'm in the room with Sutter in early May when they're going to reshoot this thing starting the next day and people know the story and they they get me in off the golf course and I, I see Kurt in that big big office of his and he says we've got this this new guy called Tig and uh, we we'd love you to think about playing and I said well I got to see something I got to he showed me one scene and that was the scene that we just filmed now in this what we're talking about in seeds and that was the only scene he showed me and I remember looking at it going. In my head, I'm going, this is it's too dark, man. It's too, it's too dark. whack. It's too dark and psychotic. And yet it's funny. The taco too for thing. It's kind of funny. Um, and I can play this, but I don't, I, it's not, it's not for me. But and also, what, but also on an acting as an, as someone who's watched you for so many years, I think that if you played that scene later, um, scenes five, six, and seven, Tig, four, even, Seen uh, seasons four, five, six, and seven of Tig. Mm -hmm. You might have played that scene different than you did in 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 that. And and the reason I say that is, this one was like Tig was more like um devious, like more like um this guy's off his fucking rocker. Tig was always off his rocker, but it became more um kind of funny and 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 and, and weird and and kind of like all over the place, right? I got sure. I, absolutely. And I got to say what I, when I studied this scene, when I got the part and here we are, the pilot's over. Now we're going to start shooting the actual show. And this is really the only scene I have in this episode. I mean, a real meaty scene. And I remember looking at it, looking at it, I said, what, what, what's, what's really going on here? And it wasn't until the end when Clay goes, what did your mama do to you? Yeah. I thought, mama, kid, what, what do kids like chocolate bars? Kids like chocolate. So I played him like a kid mm. having a chocolate bar and I fucking ate that chocolate bar yeah. for four hours when we filmed that scene. Yep. And I had chocolate on my fingers. I was licking my, and it was all real and it was funny and it was dark and it was real. And I stood up, I remember sitting on that bike and then Charlie Haig, what happened to Charlie Haig? He directed this episode. He, we never, never got him again. again, did we? No, he had a rough one. He had a rough time. We, we had a rough we, time. It's, 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 and it's kind of rare on our show. I mean, the FX team had those, like we've talked about, six or seven directors that we use that all dude the time. Had a right? Rough time. Charlie had a rough time with 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 all of us in the early he days. He came in I with a large, large ego. I don't know where he is now. He just came in with a different kind of ego. Again, remember, remember, remember. You know this about Hollywood, right? 
nobody believes in shit until it becomes something. So they kind of like, and again, we were just some show that everybody thought no one's going to watch. It's going to get canceled. Who gives a shit, right? These guys are all young. They don't know what they're doing. They're all character actors. There was no giant star on the show. So, you know, someone could come in and try to take over. And, um, and I you think, think that's, that's what part of it was. Hey, wow. Okay, I, think, I think in the beginning that people thought they knew better and Kurt made sure very quickly that those people were not around for long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but what I'll say, what I love about television so much, and it's why I'm actually aching to get back on another television show as opposed to films. While I love films, because they're the yeah. animal and you know this, what I love about television is, and I, I don't even know if this is possible anymore because nobody's doing seven seasons, 13 episodes is watching the evolution of a character. Watching Tig there. Yeah, cool. To the Tig in season seven is like the evolution of a character. Yeah, like you could 100%. literally write, you could write sure. you know, major dissertations on just that. I think that that's incredible. And I love seeing that, not just in the physical nature of a character, but in the cadence and the way they speak. And, yeah, good. And, and what people realize is we're finding those as yeah, we, we are. go. And, and it takes a while. Takes a while. It takes a while. It was a fun day at work, though. I, I really felt that was part of your show. Now, when I did when I did that scene with Ronnie, being at his side and almost—I mean, it's coming up in here. I've got like five where I'm just an extra in the background. We'll talk yeah. about it. But all right, anyway, that was a great scene. So, it was fun so, to be part of. Yeah. So then there's a great shot, uh, which Charlie Haig did different, off the bodies, where it literally like goes up in the air. Do you remember that shot when you were watching it? It's what really happened? different for Sons of Anarchy. In this episode, there was a camera shot that literally was on those bodies. And then before it would-, would On a crane? Was on a crane? Was it on a crane? It shot oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, cool. So you got to see the scope of these bodies yeah, in yeah, the whole cool. thing. Um, go ahead. I, there's something coming up that I want to ask if you remember. It's at the chapel scene, but go ahead. Sure. I, I mean, maybe we're there now, but did, did Clay smoke a cigar in almost every chapel scene? Back in the day, and I remember Ronnie was told, "How about how about cut back the cigars?" In real life, he was told. In that. real life, yeah, yeah. So because he, he was smoking them like crazy. Cigar, cigar, cigar. Yeah. Right. Um, Do you want to hear my line from that and tell me if you remember? Yeah, go. <laughs> so at this moment, I always remember this. You know, you know the deal. I don't. We look so sh- fucking young. That's all I, I have. Look so I young. So- I don't remember anything. But here's what I remember: We were vibing as a cast. It was our first real time where we were vibing, like really yeah. vibing. Yeah, I agree. And Jack said, Charlie said, whatever you want to say it as, said the lame duck line. And somebody did an improv where they went, wah, 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 and everyone started doing it. And we all started going like, wah, 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 and we were all vibing, right? I forgot that. And then none of it's in the show. No, they cut that right cut out. Cut it out. But we That's kept improv one-on-one good, but no, no, no. doing it. <laughs> yeah, Penguin does. Yeah, yeah. And we kept doing it. And it stuck around a lot, like throughout the seven, eight years, the eight years, we, we would sometimes ha- rehash that duck thing when we were at the table. Good for you. And that's where it was. And I'll never forget it because I remember sitting back and hearing the sound and looking at everybody's face and we're all smiling, we're all laughing. And it was like, oh shit, we're in something that's pretty cool. Like we're like this little fraternity of guys, these character actors that have, you know, really fucking, you know, always a, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. And here we are in this thing. And if it works, this would be pretty cool. If it works, we kind of like each other. And uh, so I remember the lame duck line for Unser and it, and it really made me laugh. Um, Okay. Good memory. No, that's a good memory. That's like equivalent to the chair memory. Oh. That's a good memory because that duck thing, it went for it years. It went for no. years. So, so here's another thing that didn't really stick throughout the years. Unser was paying us to protect runs. Was Unser yeah. doing criminal activity? Yeah, he was. And, and he also, the second thing out of his mouth with Clay in that scene is, I've got the cancer. I've got the cancer. Like, what's wrong with me? I thought we found out he had cancer in season three, no. season two, smoking no. the first show after the pilot. I got the cancer. I'm out. Yeah. He's been Boom. alive for 90 Right years. over my head. Longest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, lo- they loved him. And he just, I got to assume that there was probably multiple times in the writing where they're like, do we, is he dying? So think, of, so think about this. Kurt Sutter in the first two shows, pilot and now seeds has planted the seeds Literally. of who are the cops 
What do they do? Who's on the payroll? Who are the good cops? Who are the bad cops? Who are the sum in the middle? What is what is what's happening with these this biker uh, club? Who who are they? Who's Gemma and Tara coming? Like who? He's really planting and that fear. We 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 sort of went over it, and that's fine. We got a lot to talk about. But uh, Clay and Gemma looking at Jacks, going, "What's what's what's he reading? What's he is he okay? Is our boy okay? like there's worry already? Like yeah. there's these seeds of worry and seeds of who's who." Very early in this show, which and, I forgot. And, but, but also just the fact that literally, th- if you play this back, that means Unser was stealing trucks of electronics, then paying us <sighs> to protect these runs to move them. And he's the chief of police. I, I don't think, I think they kind of got away from that where he was part of us. They but did. I don't think he was doing his own crime. And in this- They got away from that. He's doing they his did. own crime in this. Um. He's certainly part of it. Yeah. So Jax has no white sneakers in the beginning episodes. He's wearing, and also think about other things that were happening. And these have to be holdovers from the pilot, the original pilot. When he's talking to Hale in the truck, he's not wearing glasses on the bike. We yeah, never- I just, I just, I, no, who, 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 who directed that? Where, yeah. where did that come from? You have to there's, have on. there's Hale yelling. All, I mean, they had to obviously ADR the whole thing because they were outside. There's Charlie, no glasses on. Who no, I just said, black sneakers, safe. no glasses. We, you don't, you, anybody who rides a motorcycle knows you have to have eye protection on. You can't, you just can't do it. There's a multiple parts in this, in this show where people who are riding have no eye protection on. Wow, Theo, that's just blows my mind. Right. We would never do that later on. Never. Yeah, never. No, I that. never did from the from the get go. Anyway, I, I mean, there's no way. I, I would, think Bobby. I, I think even though. Bobby rode up on uh, with the with the cupcake thing in the beginning, or the, whatever the muffins. I think. He oh, I gotta check him. that out again, man. I gotta check that out. There All was right. definitely multiple people who didn't have glasses on, and again, right there, I was like, first thing I noticed, I'm like, oh, we don't do that. We just don't do that. Um, okay, Jack's holding Wendy's hand in the hospital was a pretty cool moment. Um, it's a very cool moment. And, and I just want to bring up one little thing that happened just before that. And that's when, when Jax comes up to a stop sign, um, a crosswalk, and he smiles so beautifully. This little hello. old lady yep. and says hello. Going, and that, that again, is, is seeds of Sutter planting the good guys. The good guys. We're bad guys, but we're, we're good guys. Good we guys. do bad things, but we got good hearts. But the town we, loves we, us. Yeah. And that was another little subtle. Anyway, yes, he's holding... He's Wendy's holding her hand in the hospital, Wendy, like Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and again, it shows that even though they're not together, even though he says that they've, you know, they got divorced, whatever it was, however long before, but she had gotten sober 11 months before. And, but it just shows that he, it, again, again, not to keep using the same thing, seeds were planting who these people are, what their character flaws are yet also what their character positives are, you know, stuff like that. Um, okay. Opie behind the eight ball with Donna. Like he's in the kitchen, he's behind the eight ball. So why, why Theo? He came into that scene hot, hot. He's out angry. of prison. Okay, but he's, but, but he's, it's like, I don't know. He, he's, he was boiling over money problems, money. I mean, I guess, is it just that? Is it getting back in the club? Not so, telling Don? No, you get out of prison. I mean, listen, you get out of prison and obviously the recidivism rate of everybody going back in is usually very high. And the reason why it's so high, and I know this, you know, from all the stuff I've been doing with prison reform is they come out, they don't have anything, you know, and, and, and you got to remember everything's taken away. Most states you can't vote. Uh, yeah, you have to, yeah. if you go on, a, if you go to do a job application, you got to pick that you have, you know, you got to check the box that you have a felony and all that. So they really put you behind the eight ball. I thought that was so well done because this guy's coming out who went to jail for the club, probably could have ratted, didn't, you know, didn't. went there, did his time. His wife, Donna, obviously had problems with the club from the beginning, you know, doesn't like the club. They're having all these money problems, which leads into the piney scene, which by the way, is one of my favorite scenes that I think I've seen. One, piney doesn't have glasses on either. Okay. That's the first thing. He doesn't have glasses on the bike. He probably um, puts that oxygen so far up his nose. The oxygen is keeps all the, the way up Keeps the nose. helmet on. Didn't bother taking the helmet off. Did the whole thing with that little fucking helmet on. He tells Jesus. him, grow a dick and take care of your business. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if, if that doesn't show you who Piney is in the second episode, there is no games being played with fucking Piney Winston. It is grow a dick and fucking get out there and do what you got to do. I'm not giving you anything. 
I'm not Man. giving you a dime. Not a dime. Grow a dick. Grow and a then dick. he gets on that trike and just fucking takes peels off. Peels out. That's an original nine right there. First nine. I don't fucking peel care. Out. Yeah, peel out. I've been alive and too if, long for this if, shit. And if you think props had an easy time finding him a lid that oh. would actually squeeze on top of his head, no, they it didn't. Looked like it, an was eraser. A, it looked like an eraser. It looked like an eraser on a pencil. Well, like, and, and you know, the girls this week were giving me heck that I couldn't wear a hat and glasses. I brought oh, that, that out. Just, cool. cool hat. See, it's a, yeah, Saskatchewan, baby. Great hat. Great but, you know, I, I, I wear them low and it hits my yeah. glass. So, but, you know. Pineys was up here. Pineys just sat like a cupcake yeah, on top yeah, of his yeah, head. Yeah. And so I love that scene. And again, shows Opie and Pineys dynamic right away. Okay. Um. Here we go. Smoking cigarettes at the table. Okay, and before we go in there, Theo, I, I, I have to mention to everybody how things, and you brought this up beautifully 10 minutes ago, things go by the wayside. Yep. Things just kind of went by the wayside, right? Do you know what went by the wayside? I'll never forget when we go to the chapel for every single scene, phones. Put the phones in the box. Oh, we did that in Take the original the pilot. To- Pilot, first scene, yeah. second, third. You watch, and then it just goes, fuck it. We're not doing that. We're not, we're not doing that anymore. It's a waste of time. It's just too much Ex- to so show. So explain, explain to people what that is. So what I'm, it is, I'm good. go ahead, what we Okay, did. so first of all, people need to know that the reason why, and we're, we're, there's iPhone, we had burners. Because burners, flip phones, flip phones or burners, they can't be traced. They're not an algorithm. So change not the, the SIM card. You have to change yeah, the SIM they, card. Yeah, the they, can't, they can't be tracked. So we all had flip phones for a reason because we were part of Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club. So we all had burners, but we had to throw them in that because because there was no, what if you left your phone on? What if people, someone, someone. And accidentally, also we don't, yeah, you could hear something that could implicate you in a crime. Right. Correct. You, you, yeah. yeah. You all of a sudden you called your, your mechanic and you left the phone on and you're talking about decapitating, a, you know, something. Uh, and it's on your phone. So we left them on the pool table. I just I just noticed that. I remember show up to show, and then it just finally went away, thank God. And in the original pilot, we would put them in like a big cigar box and like close the box. It and was like- it was it it was there. Oh, in this we would scene. do that. We yeah, just we didn't would- shut the box. But yeah, that's right. We would so that, Tommy that did that. Went away. Yes. And Tommy said, I'll away. do it. And that went away quickly, really quick. <laughs> that was just a waste of camera, waste of film. We weren't doing it anymore. So Jax is there. Everybody's smoking cigarettes. I'm smoking cigarettes. Everybody's smoking. I'm not. Uh, I was. And we were really I, smoking. I, I'm going to tell you when I started, but it's not here. Anyway, you were. Everyone was. Ryan, Charlie, Bobby, you. Perlman's so, got the stogie. Oh, so much fucking smoke in that room. Oh, oh. goodness. And then, and then, you know, th- what stopped later on, if you remember this, uh, when the world started to change, even when we were there, season six and seven, Tommy and people used to walk around and smoke on set. They stopped that at the end. Out, outside. Out. Get people out. People would just literally be smoking between seats. Yeah. Out. That was Get dumb. outside. Couldn't do that yeah. anymore. So um, Jax is being the thinker in that scene. Clay yeah. and you, you and Clay, and again, planting the seeds of fucking dissension between you guys. Immediately, you guys say, we're just going to kill the Nords. We're going to get grab some of them. Yeah. We're going to set yeah. them up. We kill yeah. two birds and one stone. Here we go. Yeah. And Jack says, no, nah. hold, hold on. It gives us a reason to go see Skeeter. Skeeter. The cream eater. I got it's cremator, but cream eater, Skeeter. Skeeter's still on Twitter. We still see him. We still talk to him. Um, I love that guy. He did a few shows. Am I right? He did. Is that his first? That's his first. Yeah, Honestly, it's the second episode. That was a dumb question. And how many did he show up past season one? Oh yeah, for sure he did. Couple more times. I mean, I I need to look him up, but I don't want to take the time because I, no. I'd rather talk. I'd rather talk to you. Okay, so then I got to tell you something. We 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 don't really address, and and I'm not gonna. Uh, I I don't think now is the time. But it's really interesting, you know, seeing the half sack character, like actually acting. Uh, it's a fucking crazy story. You know, one day I'm sure we'll discuss it. Um, but seeing him and seeing that character and the development they had in the beginning for that character. And, and, and I know, I know that there were some big plans for that character that never came to fruition. Um, it's just a little odd. And this was kind of a bigger episode where they were really trying to define that prospect, you know, and define the half set character. Cause I, I think, and I think 
I, I wonder, I think I've asked Kurt this is he was supposed to be a big part of the plan. And we all know that that did not work out. Um, well, and, but I have to add to what you're saying and just say that there were in the end of this epic show called Sons of Anarchy, 10 leads, 10. Then there was some incredible guest stars all the way along. And Half Sack was one of those early, like he had billing, I had billing Tommy, Maggie, Ron. That was it. There's six of us, seven of us, Katie, Charlie, obviously. And, and Sutter always said, at least he certainly did to me, hang in, hang in. Your time as Tig is, he said that to you, hang in, hang in. And, and, he, and he was right for both of our characters. Juice and Tig had a juicy finale yes. to the entire series. But what I want to know, and I didn't get to know Johnny as well as maybe you did. I certainly yeah, got to yeah. know him and I, lo I love yeah. that kid. But maybe he was just impatient to wait or, me, you know, I, you know, or maybe you don't like the TV show, the being number seven on the call sheet. Maybe you want a, your own show. I there was so much more going on. Yeah. There was so much more going on. We'll get into uh, that. Some, yeah, we'll sometime. get into it another time. There was just so much more going on. Um, I, I, the, the level that I got to know him is the level that I got to know a lot of the outsiders on the show, which was, I always fancied myself a bit of like a communicator on the show where we had our core, sure. almost like our core five, our core sure. six that we were always all so tight. And then I would, I would search out the outsiders sure. and Reach I, out. would, I would be Help the them connection out. to bring them. them in. Let, me, let, yeah. let me try to bring them in. Cause I wanted yeah. everyone to be happy. It's kind of one of my defaults. Uh, my, or one of my faults, I should say, is I try, I want, I don't want anybody to be uncomfortable because at the end it makes me uncomfortable where now I don't really give a fuck, but like back then, yeah. especially in a working environment, if, if I see someone's an outsider and yeah. they're not really on, you know, on the team or maybe they're, they lack a certain confidence to be, cause it was, it was a tough group to be around. Um, you know, you had to really come in ready, ready at all times. And, uh, I just think he had a tough time, but yeah, seeing him was interesting. This is a bigger episodes for him. So Jack's uh, okay. So here uh, Alvarez, this is, this is, I love the Alvarez and Darby scene. Let me tell you why. It's like two major uh, enemies antagonists, like right there. Like we, we set it up episode two where these are two bad guys. One is a white supremacist. One is the leader of this incredible Latina Mexican club. Yeah. There's already animosity, let alone what they're gonna do together for the show. And the way that they hands, played it, they wouldn't the shake played, hands and that, they don't that, look no, but, at each but, other. But but did you see that Emilio put that mid of his right across the table and it took Darby 42 minutes. That's right. To barely shake his hand and then strut away with his big swastika on his neck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, it was and, and, and Emilio Alvarez, I should say, and Emilio as well. But Alvarez is such a G in that scene because he oh. fucking, he literally just, he's in control. No matter what that dude does, he's eating. He doesn't, he doesn't fall for any of his tricks because Darby's doing all that hate speech. And, you know, it's kind of similar to what people do today. They think if they're fucking angry and say vicious things that that's going to get attention. And, and he's just fucking cool, man. Laser cool. Laser Gangstered cool. out, man. But, but what I was thinking when I watched that was, fuck, these are two really good bad guys. And they were the bad guys until Stahl, Zobel. Um, sure. And then ultimately Gemma. You know, I mean, ultimately the bad guys became us within the, the so we had these enemies. Karma's then, a bitch. And then we became our Karma's own. Karma's a bitch, yeah. Right. yeah. So uh, just really cool to see that. It was kind of like a meeting of the minds or whatever. That was um, great. Jackson, Emily Duncan in the room. Okay, so, you know, like, <laughs> hi, what's your name? Uh, Charlie Hunnam. Hey, listen, we want you to play a guy called Jax Teller. Okay, what do I got to do? Well, you're going to have to take your, you know, show off your cat, 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 stomach, and then you might have to put a cut on and then just like, you know, have fun in, in your own bedroom with a gal we've never met before in the show. Okay, where do I sign up? Like, oh. What a rock star. He's a total rock star. And she was a rock star with him. Yes. What, a, what, a, what a great freaking, I mean. <laughs> but just a I great go, scene. Emily, Jack, shirtless, cut, cut, cut. Yeah. Woohoo. You do me, I do him. Fair enough. I mean, what the fuck? And then she, even after that, she says, stop, put your cut on. 
Yes. And he says, did. I'm, I'm, I'm all about the service. Like, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Fucking Jax Teller. There, there we, go. we go. Oh man. Come on. I mean, that, that is, you know, there's, there's some characters on television that are just so fucking cool. And he was that Kurt, Kurt, you know, has done many things that have uh, immortalized that character. And he started pretty early with that. And uh, just a cool dude, man. Just a fucking cool dude. In that and, with, and, and with that cool coolness came, uh, did you know, I should have counted, but how many smiles did Jax have in this episode? How many smirks and smiles and innocence in the yeah. early times of this club? I mean, man. He became His charm was was on full. He full became barrel. he became you know, and I'll argue this later in the show, but he became kind of a bad guy at the end. You know, well, I've always no doubt. said that he became not just his own worst enemy; he became the enemy. He became a bad guy. I just wrote down, man. Did they disappear fast? Yeah. Season five, six, seven. Things started to to, to really pull him down. The weight of yeah. the world. His father, he was happy, his mother. Man. He was having fun. He's happy he, here. He's the young VP, and he was just the fucking dude. And and again, that's just one of the scenes. But you're right. Throughout the episode, he's always smiling. He's always kind of whatever. Um. All right. The okay, grave. So, the grave yeah, Robin. Scene. Yeah. Okay. So Come on. so I wasn't there, and I I just want to know like how. How ready were you like a puppy dog to help out? Like you just jumping down. Look at, I mean, first of all, I, I just dug a hole in my, my cabin that I have here in British Columbia. We put a new deck on and I was helping like my buddy. I remember, dig. I saw the video. It, right, I saw it. Right, it it yeah. took me eight hours to dig like four yeah. feet. Like he's digging the, the, a gravesite like in two But it took two about two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Two. This shows you it would have taken two weeks. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a TV show. Without a bobcat, it would have taken two weeks. So yeah, yeah. so he's down there with the shovel, mm -hmm. and then you just jump right down. Helper, helper. Yeah. Okay? So so uh, we're peppering the comedy in there. You know, we're we're really finding our way as the as the actors. My my always my thought of juice. I think I might have even been too scared to ask at that point, but was that he was the last prospect? Like so, he had just gotten in. I couldn't agree more. So, so my, my default was whenever something needed to be done, I was the first one because I was used to being the guy who did it, right? Yeah. Okay. So I did that in that scene and that's why I jumped right in. I don't know if even anybody told me I just jumped right in. I think you just jumped right in. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I love that. And then him and I were improv the whole time in that car. We were just love making that scene. stuff up. And uh, we were just running it while the car was driving. We would just kept going back and forth, you know, uh, Sack and I, and we were just literally doing it. And again, this is before I knew that that wasn't going to be in the movie. You're right. That if you did that, that might even be a problem. I didn't know that. I was just doing what we, what I did on any other project. Uh, and especially if keep it alive, if keep it alive. Air, if there's yeah, dead man. air, keep it alive, right? Like keep say something. Alive. Don't just not say anything especially when people are tense and here we are driving in this tense situation, him and I in this state. I love area. it. I love that little scene. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Tara and Gemma scene. So listen to why I think this is important. The beginning of many, many, this is really the Ooh. first of them having that moment. They're right at each other's throats. You know, you want to touch me, sweetheart, that this is, we don't know which way Tara is going to go. We, we don't, don't know who and Gemma I, is. No, we don't, and we don't yet. But I have to say, and the one thing Charlie Haig did do, which I loved in this scene, was, you know, when you're waiting for an elevator, you you just are waiting for the elevator. Looking straight. They looked straight ahead, waiting for the elevator, and they're talking shit, talking shit, getting a little tenser. But they just they didn't turn around to do this until the very end. And of course, Gemma leads that whole parade with, you want to touch me? You want to come close? I thought she was going to kiss her. Like, it oh, was one me of those. Too. And, I, and I think that was her point, like to intimidate to that point of like, absolutely. What are you going to do? Let me see how uncomfortable I can make you. Yeah. How far yeah. can I push you? Who are you? And then yeah. Tara gets on and gives her a look that she's yeah. not intimidated. And here we go, right? Because we know they've probably done. 996 scenes together throughout the seven years, eight years. They, that was the first 
jumping off the, the diving board together in that yeah. scene right there. Yeah. And I love it. So, um, okay. Uh, here's the thing about that, that scene where they get pulled over. Tommy, Jax, me, Zach, the cop. I'll never forget the cop. He was so excited. He, he was, you know, I, and I've been there. I'm that guy. I've had the two lives. I've been there. He was excited. We were excited. Let me tell you something that happened on that day. You need Please. to know this. this is the best story ever. It's Please. Probably, not, probably not the best ever, but it was actually pretty funny. We're doing that scene in the middle of nowhere. No one would know this, but at that time, yeah. HBO had filmed a biker show called 1%. 1%. Correct. That's right. I had read for that. Yeah. So, so, so did I. Okay. Sonny. So did Sonny my boy, Barger, Billy Fickner. Sonny Barger was producing that show with HBO. Donald Logue was the yeah. lead of yeah. that show. Okay. Correct. Now let me, let me, let's, let me, let me take you down a little path here. We had filmed our show, our original pilot before them. But there was an announcement in the Hollywood trades that two motorcycle shows were in development, Sons of Anarchy and 1%. If my history lesson of Hollywood tells me correctly, Kurt and them had pitched this show to HBO and they said, no, our show. And then when FX decided to make the show, because HBO lost out and thought maybe we missed out on a bad, on a good idea, they greenlit 1%, this biker show. They, we filmed first, and now we're here we are filming our next two episodes. We're in the middle of nowhere. Me, Tommy, Jax, Sack, like I just said, smoking our cigarettes in the middle of this country road in up uh, North California. And we knew about their show. They knew about ours. Some fucking guy drives by and goes, fuck you guys, fuck Sons of Anarchy, 1%, HBO, 1%, and yells and drives away. Are you making this up? I'm not making this. I can't make this up. I'm not that good. And I, w I thought, are we in a fucking turf war with fucking HBO? Oh, fucking my 1%? God. And me, did they and have that guy? Did they have that guy going out on every road looking for us filming? I don't. Going, I, Fuck if, you. if he just happened to be a grip or something, maybe he was yeah. driving to work and he happened to live up there or whatever. And Tommy, you know Tommy, he'll fight at the drop of a fucking penny. And I have zero patience for anything, so we're just ready to go. Ready like, to drop trial. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> I'll knock you out. I think drop trial is take your pants off, but it, I don't. It is. It, okay, it, it, it so is. I don't. I definitely we'll didn't do want to drop trial. Yeah, 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 I want to keep my pants on. Yeah. So, so I remember thinking <laughs> it's going to be us this show, and then we started to think, wait a second, is this going to affect our show? Like them coming out, and 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 long story, fucking long story, really long. Their show never came out and never made it past the pilot. And Donald, the lead of their show, the jacks of their show wound up being on our show. So he did. He everything did. happens for a reason. And yeah. no, that's so funny because I do remember them shooting that pilot. They did. They cast Donald Logue. I know who was up for the lead with him and didn't get it. And they cast, and Donald's great. And right. I was up for a part. I didn't get the part. Okay, fine. But something happened where we, we shot our pilot. Now we're filming and we ordered 13 shows no matter Boom. what. And I think HBO just got all freaked out about that. And maybe they didn't like their pilot that much. I'm not sure. I... I'll tell you who liked it. That guy who drove by because he was yeah, ready to he fight. Did. He was ready to fight four <laughs> guys in Sons of Anarchy cuts over their a TV show. So, Get out of here. Yeah, beat so, it. So we did that scene and that scene was just one of my favorites. Cause again, we're laughing, we're running in the car. Everybody's improv and we're doing that whole thing. Um, I just love everything about that. But here's what's funny. Another thing about the scene, the cop actually fires at the station wagon. Not completely. And it doesn't hit anybody, of course. But what the fuck boom, is he boom. doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, just da -na 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 -na. shoot, shoot, da -na -na -na. like violent. Boom, boom, shoot boom, boom. At people. We didn't do shoot. anything. So again, it's a TV show. Um, okay, OP protection scene. Um, he's sitting with Clay. They had such an interesting relationship, Opie and Clay, didn't they? Yeah, I, I'm. In fact, I'm. I'm watching it live, like you are, by by seeing some of these shows that I haven't seen. I'd seen this one before, but I got to tell you, 
they have father son talks a lot and i and i think you brought this up earlier about him going to prison for the club when you do something like that like when when you i mean this is a fictional show but i'm sure this has happened in real life when you actually take the bullet for the club and you say nothing and you actually serve time i don't know man you you owe that person something that's why coming up very short, very soon here, six, seven, when we find out that we think Opie's on the, like he's, 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 he's being a rat for sure. The, the, the tough thing that, that Perlman and I had to do in that chapel to decide to take him out, which is so sad that we had to come to that decision then. But yeah, they had a lot of talks together. These two. And I, and I do feel, I do feel like Opie had a lot of admiration for Clay. I think that, and I think it bothered, did. and I think it bothered Jax. I think that Opie really liked Clay. It did. That's a very good point. Um, and I think that that's something that we didn't explore as much. But I think that maybe at one point I'd be curious what Kurt said if there was ever a thought of like using Opie as like because I know we touch on it a little down to really when when him and Jax were having all those problems. But but seeing their talks, that's not that's one of many that they had. One of one of many, and and also you you remember this, Theo? There 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 were times where Opie would talk to Jax like, "No, you're not the president. He is. He is. He is." Count and they were they were best buds, and they yeah. they were to the very Opie end. Was, but, Opie was way more like Team Clay, you know, like whatever people Team say. Club, then, yeah, yeah, Team yeah, Club, yeah. Team, team History. So yeah. here's here's a funny thing about that came up. Um, the next scene. Yeah. God, this I remember this clear as fucking day. We're dragging that body, the guy. Yeah, into the car. Big guy. No, we're at the funeral home. We're setting. We're setting, oh, that one. We're setting the scene. Oh, I'm setting the scene. That one. Okay. We got the two dead cadavers. And here's this. I'll never forget this. Remember, we're all starting to figure each other out. We're all becoming friends. We realize who we're with. Charlie and I were super close, you know, and we were doing our thing and everybody's kind of figuring it out. Tommy's a wild man. The crew, you know, that wasn't necessarily our crew that was with us for seven years, but they, they were, you know, a lot of them were, were, were around for a while. Everybody's getting to know each other. Are we yeah. going to be on this ride for a couple of episodes? Are we going to be on this ride for a couple of years? We're still trying to figure it out. The guest stars who would come on, they don't know our show. It hasn't aired yet. So they're just there for work. They're not in awe like they were season in season three five, on, six, season on, five, yeah. six, seven. <clears throat> when you came on the show, it was like kids in kids store. Right. Yeah. That big guy who plays that cadaver that we're, that we're going to put in the front seat, the one who we dig up. Yeah. He did the whole show with this blue makeup on to look dead and was verbally, as the character, abused consistently throughout the show. They were talking about his weight and, and making fun of him. And I remember thinking, this sucks. Like, <laughs> I remember thinking this kid is an extra. So he's making no money. I've been there. I started as an extra. He's making no money. But not just is he an extra who's making no money. These motherfuckers have to make fun of him to his face, thinking he's dead and he's not. But dead. he is dead, but he's not. <laughs> but he's not. Yeah. And I was like, so I obviously was hanging out with him the whole night and befriended him and whatever. And I just, because again, I had such a, because I was an extra not too long before. Little that. puppy dog. In you. Yeah. I and it. I remember thinking like, don't take this shit personal. Like this is just a fucking TV show. And we had to drag him and, 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 you know, I know would say I wasn't the there, lines but I thought, yeah. Passack would say those lines when he was in the hole with him. But I remember just thinking, man, if people really knew about acting, you know, it's, I, mean, I just, so I just felt bad. And, I, and that scene always remembered me the, these horrible things and, you know, painted blue and all that. So, okay. So we do that scene. Uh, we have to fire off the gun. Safety first isn't there. If you notice, I'm not one of the guys firing. Um, the reason I wasn't is because um, that definitely wasn't safety first that night. There was a lot of people just firing guns and, and uh, those blanks. So if you see me, I'm actually in the back. I wasn't one Good. of the three firing. Good. I, Good. I learned early. Um, so we're robbing Unser's truck. Tell me, uh, Opie has a conscience there and says something about it. Well, well, first of all, in that truck scene, there was a Jeff Wincott, right? Yeah. Jeff Wincott played played the Italian guy. We Michael thought he Wincott's we were, brother. 
Yeah, exactly right. And Jeff and I, my very first TV show ever was a, a TV show called Night Heat up in Toronto before you were born, 1986, 87, okay. 86, 87. And I was a guest star and a guy called Sonny Grosso produced it. Now, Sonny Grosso, know, Sonny. French he, was the, he was the original French Connection cop, right? He played Jimmy Roy Doyle. Scheider's character. Oh, was it Roy Scheider's character? Roy Scheider played Sonny Grosso. Okay, there you go. There yeah. you go. Because there was two of them. That's right. And yeah. and Popeye Sonny, Doyle, Popeye Doyle, and, and uh, Sonny. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And and Sonny was just like the guy. No, the guy. The guy. Yeah. And I've done three things with him back in the day. Loved him. Tough, tough cop. Anyway, Jeff Wincock starred on Night Heat. There he is. And I, I remember thinking, wow, we've got these guys popping in, guest star, few lines, good part. Hug and Clay, here we are. We're going to rob this freaking truck. It was a good night. It was a good night on set, meeting a guy I knew from Canada. And, was he uh, ever back? Did he come back? No, Never. no. I mean, no, one other, one other time he did. <clears throat> Season five or six, way down, we got him back. His brother Tommy, is a fucking amazing Michael. actor. He was great in The Doors. I know he's a Yeah, no, actor. Michael said it, but he's crazy. He's a crazy he's, man, you know? Crazy man. He's got man. some memorable... He's got a whole thing going on that he just, you know, it's him. The second, like that voice. Michael. Yeah. That voice, the whole thing. Did you work with him? No, but I used to hang with him and, and Gary Oldman and Tommy Sizemore and Matt Craven. And they were days that I'd like to forget. They, there were some pretty long evenings in New York city back in the early nineties. Let me tell you that, but. Well, no. so so that scene, uh, we're robbing the truck, you know, uh, Opie, you know, wants to check in and be that moral compass in it. Um, so now we cut to this scene, which I have to tell you about the scene in the fucking 7-Eleven or the convenience store, or the truck stop, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? Axe in the head. Like, okay. you were there. What happened? There. So, so what? I forgot the, about that scene. Okay. What episode? I don't know if we reviewed it already. I don't, maybe we haven't, or maybe it's the first episode. Go ahead. Show, what episode to... is it when Jax beats up the guy on the, uh, the, the bike, the motorcycle, the. You mean the, when the, at the garage, at the service at the station? Gas station? Yeah. And then the girl comes in, rides with Charlie. Correct. I don't, I don't know if we re that reviewed one? that one. Oh, I don't know. Okay. It might be episode one. Who cares? But we we who cares? <laughs> Truly, who cares? But um, <laughs> so much, so much. So he, uh, we would play that moment a lot where Jax was kind of not just this outlaw biker, what we said earlier when he's saying hello to the uh, the woman crossing the street, but that he also was more morality, like that he wouldn't let a guy cut him off, and that he was going to act as the voice for what a lot of us think, like when we get cut yeah, off or yeah. when some jerk off on a Those, motorcycle, you know, does something or road rage, which guy. we should road all rage. back away from, but on a TV show, you can show. Jax you know, gets to be the law and order of that. So he right. walks in and they see that car. Chibs points it out after we had just gotten this on the run from these cops, which yeah. we should be going home. No, I want to do this. And Jax goes in. Revenge. Sees the guy and starts beating the shit out of him. Yeah. Lo and behold, the guy pulls a gun, fires. Of course, he doesn't hit anybody. I, it's, you know, the gang that can't shoot straight. No, thank Nobody goodness. Can shoot. Nobody can. He misses. There's an attack. And somehow the clerk or the guy behind the counter has a fucking axe. Like axe. Jason Voorhees. <laughs> and like fucking, a horror movie. Like Halloween a horror 4. Movie. Where'd that come from? And An hits axe. him in the head, a fucking axe. And I remember when we were doing that. How did that apparatus stay on top of his head, Theo? How did was, they figure that it was out? Cut out, and it had like a little <laughs> latch, like a like a clear, <laughs> like a clear thing that was attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But I remember him walking around with that. I was still smoking <laughs> cigarettes at the time, and I remember thinking. What it's a Friday. Day. It's, like fra it's like it's like Friday on? morning and three yeah, in the morning. Yeah, three in the morning. You're fucking delirious. Yeah. And half second, I have to run up and react to like this guy just got hit with an axe in the window. I saw that. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> but Very that well was done. real because I was questioning what the fucking show was about at that moment. Where I went, <laughs> what is this? Like, 
nobody gets hit with an ax in the head <laughs> and dies like that. Like the way he died, where it was like, oh. No, know? no, it was the greatest. I thought, what, what it was are campy. Doing? It was a little campy. It was, it was campy. way campy. Way campy. <laughs> but again, we're finding our way. And I thought it was really interesting because we didn't do shit uh, like that. We didn't do shit like that later on. So that was just this crazy scene. Um, okay. So now we got Clay going in on Unser, setting him straight on that talk. Okay. And we're not even going to talk about the talk because we need to talk about something that's more important. For all you kids out there who want to go into acting, and and figure it out and you're listening to Theo and I and, and you're taking your classes I want you to look at that scene this is called acting 101 by Kim Coates is Tig Traeger with no lines what do you do in the background what do you do in the background and I remember when they set up the cameras Charlie he set up the cameras there's on sir there's Clay and he wanted Tig in the background just hanging out if you look at that scene you will see me Checking over my shoulder, checking over my shoulder, adjusting my belt, turning my back to this. But I, I'm always listening and I'm always trying not to steal focus, but you got to do something. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool. Can I ask you a question? Did I have a sure. dream? Of, did I have a dream about this? Or, or is this one of the alternate realities, alternate realities I live in? Which you, um, have, which you have all the time. Multiple, Go ahead. by the way. I live in multiple alternate realities. Um, let me ask you this. We were shooting at some kind of like horse ranch. Yeah. Okay. There at was the, at, at the end of season one. We, we went there a couple of times. Okay. There is a scene that you and Clay filmed. Yeah. Just sitting together. Yeah. Did that make it in the show? Yeah. Okay. That's coming up, correct? Oh, yeah. In okay. fact, let me tell you something, Mr. Alter Reality, which is quite true right now. That scene, you're in it. That scene is when I break down about Donna. Thank you. I break down about Donna. I remember Donna. that day. Like and it Clay, was Clay yesterday. takes my, my head in his hands with a horse behind going, I never thought about what this is doing. It's a beautiful, Kurt oh, directed. I can't wait. It's, that's, it's the last episode okay. of season one. Okay. We'll, I can't get, wait. I yeah. can't wait. But it's the and, you, same, and you were there. It's the same location that we might yeah. have been in for this. Yeah. Okay. I just, I had a flashback. Yeah, no, we, 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 you know, Tony Medina and the boys tried to, with not having a lot of money in this first season, we had more and more money every season. They tried to use the same locations as much as we could. Right. And also Charming's not a very big place. So no. we, we should not be going to different horse farms all the time. Right. So. So Donna scene in the supermarket, in the yeah. supermarket. Um, I just wrote this so much fucking heartache in this Winston crew. Oh God. I mean, I, I, you know, but and be, Jen and and beautiful writing. And, and Gemma doesn't give it up. She really understands the plight of Donna Winston. And Donna Winston's telling, I don't want to be, she goes, I get it, but we're having dinner tonight at seven o'clock. Bring the kids. Right. Just and come on. Gem, Gemma's always schooling people in the beginning about family. May, maybe really the whole, you know, eight years. The whole years. thing. She's schooling people on family of like, right from the get-go. Gemma's like, right, I get it, but we're not your family. Aunt. Family, we're, we're family, family, family. Yes, yes. Like, yes. This says yeah. Thriller in Manila. Don't worry, but that's a whole yeah. other thing. Um, no, okay. it's a whole other thing. Okay. Great scene by those two girls. So great, great scene. scene. Um, so and then we and then we get to can I just say the Floyd yeah. answer? Can I talk about the Floyd answer? Yeah, yeah that's uh, what right? I wanted you to. It, it's a really cool little scene because man, look at our boy Floyd with understanding how we do things in charming. Do you want to know what I wrote about it? That it's like an old western line. It's like a fucking old Western line. If that Couldn't was an old West, if that was a spaghetti Western or whatever, and the guy walks out and he goes, that boy needs a hot shave. It sounds like a fucking old West cowboy line. And the way he delivered it, and it was so undercut, under subtle, there's answer. Give him a little, that boy needs a hot shave. I mean, it's just beautiful. And, and let's think about humans and, uh, and the way they react. Um, he, Clay, gave it to Unser, made him feel like shit, made him feel small. What's Unser going to do? Make someone else feel like shit and feel small. That's, you know, wow. that's psych, that's Good psych 101. Good that's psych up, 101. Man. That's what we do. That's what, that's what people do to each other, right? Good Usually every way you react to someone is someone the way you feel that someone treated you. So if you're always around kindness, you're a kind person. If you're always around, if you're around negative energy, you're a fucking you take it out asshole. on somebody else. No that's good right. for you. 
If you're in a bad relationship, all your relationships become bad because you're, you're impacted by them. So I love that moment. Here he is. He just got verbally beat up. Clay just stripped him of his manhood, took his truck, did whatever. What's he going to do? He's going to go take it out on a guy who, by the way, is not wrong. Let's not, let's never get it twisted. That's right. Hale is trying to do the right thing. That's right. No, okay. that's right. Good for you. Okay. So uh, Jack's reading on the roof. Let me tell you why I knew this was an early, early episode. And we didn't know what we were doing. Well, first of all, his running shoes were white as, as blinding snow in Northern Saskatchewan. They haven't even been worn yet. No. Do you remember those things that they used to use? Uh, they were big in New York in like the 70s and 80s. They don't wear them anymore. They'd be like the reflector things the guys would hold, or the women would For, hold. To get a tan? Sun. Yeah, to get yeah, a tan. To get a tan. Oh, yeah. I did it all the time. No, I'm kidding. They don't, they don't make those anymore. I saw my, no. They're blinding. You'll get blind from those. Blind. Things. But that's what his shoes looked like. They're <laughs> silver. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were blinding light. Blind. Washington, Saskatchewan has snow that way. I want you to go back to that scene, which I know you won't, but anybody who's listening to this, and I want you to look out into the distance. There's hundreds of cars in the parking lot. You can see our vans, our transmo vans. You could potentially even see the trailers. Oh my God. You can see. We didn't black that out. We didn't black that out. We didn't use the money to get rid of shit. No. And we didn't even move. Nobody said like, Hey, we got to shoot the scene, move all that stuff. They just said, Hey, we got to shoot the scene. Like there was, we got, let's go. Got no time left. Got no money left. Let's go get it. No money. That's a cheap show. You can see our trailers. You can see our vans. You can see our personal cars. Was Booney Booney coming out of his? Was he coming out? Like out and in, out and in. Booney. Stay in one place. I want to know where you are. So I was so amazed by that. I'm like, wow, they just showed the park, the whole crew parking lot. Good for you. Good okay. pickup. So, and again, that's how you know it was early. Um, Gemma is heading into Jax's room. She's prying about the yeah. journal, bringing back old memories. Go ahead. Yeah, all, just all those old memories. And that those pictures that her and Clay, they start worrying about what Jax is reading. Oh my God, is it the JT stuff? Is it the journals? Like they're all, and the, that photo- could, could you believe that photo Amazing. of Ron, JT, Katie pregnant, and someone else? Like, I don't know who they're the fourth person. Some was. of them have been really bad. I mean, the oh. one, there's one of you and Clay that when no, you it's guys the worst. Are young, it's the worst photo I've ever seen. I remember giving them a photo of me younger, and they didn't even use it. No, it's they, horrible. They, they just went on my face. They just turned it down 20 years it, it, I look like a, a Muppet gone wrong. You look like Potsy from Happy Days. Like I look like Potsy's right. bad cousin living in a cave. You're the but, no yeah. horrible. I don't horrible. Know what I don't know. And so there has been bad photos, but I got to tell you that was a good one. That Not was bad. A good one. Anytime I can say there's a good picture of my my best friend and Ron, Ron Perlman, that That's was a, a pretty good, good picture of Ron Perlman. Yeah. The big teeth of his. So so now Hale's visiting Telemaro. He comes in. And he's basically trying to be the good guy. And again, here the sons are having one up on him. He's powerless. And we're setting that dynamic of the bad guy right now. He's becoming, even though he's a good guy, he's a bad guy. He's He's just a real thorn in our side. He's a thorn in our side. And he's just, he's going to try and fuck things up by doing good. But that's not how we roll. No. Nothing charming. Got to root for the bad guys. Yeah. Which is so amazing on all these TV shows that are popular. The bad guys are the heroes. You wonder why everybody's so fucked up. The bad how, guys. How, how, the however, heroes. however, they better do some heroic deeds or they don't get the title of being heroes. Sons of Anarchy, we did some heroic deeds. There was always someone darker than sure. us, badder than us. Sure. That's why it works. You just can't be. But at the same know. time, you have two women dead in a hole oh. in the warehouse. Don't, I mean, don't get not- me. Don't get me going. I know. I agree. I agree. Okay. So Katie, uh, uh, before we get to Katie singing, uh, well, Katie minus right before she starts, we go to that shot in the furnace, which is a very famous shot. I've signed that picture a thousand times of you praying me making I'm, the comment about lost semen. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something about that scene. I don't know if you're going to remember this or not, but everyone in life goes through certain things that are tragic and sad and happy, obviously. We, we, we lost a, a costumer Ray Ray. Uh, on that show called Ray Ray. And he, we just lost him. And it was a really sad moment for all of us. And 
Yeah, we were all there. Like, and, that hit us like a ton the, of bricks. You know, and and it's because the 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 whole family of SOA was beginning and the seeds the original, of us all the being, original Reaper crew. Yeah. The original Reaper crew. We were all together on this and we lost someone who passed away. And I remember that scene. I, I made Did that he pass up. away on a motorcycle or was it something else? He, he it was a car accident. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, I think he was on his bike and he passed away in a car accident, but I, I, I made that up. May the Ray, Ray of sunshine. Wow. I put two rays in there for Ray Ray. Didn't tell anybody about it. I mentioned it maybe to you and Charlie back way back in the wow. day, but I didn't tell Kurt and they kept it in. And I'm so glad they kept it in me, you know, sunshine on their souls, you know, may the Ray, the Ray, I said, Ray Ray twice. Anyway, it was just a hidden. And then the show ends with the, the RIP yeah. to Ray, to Ray Ray. Yeah. Um, so that was our first, which, you know, that on that show we went through, a lot of tumultuous times, but I remember that was super early on. Ray Ray was kind of part of our crew. He would come and hang out yep. with us. We would all go, you know, we would hang out, yep. we'd go to bars together. We'd go to restaurants. We'd, we, he'd be at the barbecues, you know, we would do yeah, everything. He's a beautiful boy. The beautiful boy. And he, when he passed, um, again, we're, we're all just still trying to find our way. So that scene became even bigger it than, it, than it was. It had more emotion than it was, and it wasn't supposed to be in a way, right? You know, and it became, and again, now we're starting to see a different side of TIG because wait, this guy's just talking about pouring bleach in someone's belly. Yeah. And now he's saying a prayer for that. Dead that's bodies? the that's the Kurt Sutter genius of <laughs> flipping the pancakes from the good to the bad to the good to the funny to the bad. And and that was a beautiful ending for me and you and Charlie and Tommy and hitting half sack. We were together in something that was the end of the show. And then Gemma's song, right? I mean, his song, her voice. So so that was a really interesting thing, too. It's not just Gemma's song. That's probably her most famous, I think. I think so. Yeah, she I sings think so. that one on any of the events. Everybody knows it. Everybody yeah. knows it. Um, but it showed the difference in the people. Here we all are having fun at this dinner, and Ronnie's leading the charge, and there's jokes and laughing. And then we cut to the Winstons, and they just look absolutely miserable um i know and we start cutting around to people <clears throat> excuse me and we start really seeing the dichotomy the difference of these characters um pretty fucking brilliant man and then obviously the shout out to ray ray um yeah man I, you know listen this is that early stuff this is this feels like nostalgia like you know you get lost and you get a little um you know maybe like you don't remember the middle ones as much especially when we were really in it um, but there's always certain things from every episode. And I think what makes this show so special that we're doing is it made me think of things where I had to pause and go, how many years ago was that? Yeah. That 2008, feels- 2008, baby. It was 12 years ago. 12 years ago. ago. <coughs> and I remember- you were, you, you, were, you, you were 14 years old. You were I was 14. 12, I was six years old. I mean, come on. I was 80 back then because I looked you really were good. 80, you are Nosferatu. 92 you are going right now. The good. other way. <laughs> you are literally aging in reverse. All right. Come on. All right, Let the people go. Let them have Let their them dinners. go. I love you. What Tell a beautiful Wednesday. I love you. I love you. See you in a week. Be kind, we motherfuckers. Be, be kind, kind, you motherfuckers. I love Who you. Who cares? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>